Okay. So good evening, one and all. And welcome to our session two. I'm Kavita, and I will be your trainer for today. So welcome to our module three of our communication essentials. So welcome, one and all. I'm just going to be sharing the slides with you. So I just hope there are a couple of participants who have joined us. Um, I think there are about seven who are waiting uh, to join the session. So let's get them on um, ready and attending the session. Okay. Uh, I hope everyone can see the slides. We're going to get started now. So welcome to module three. Now, this session is a one-hour session, uh, unlike the other one that we had for two hours. So we're going to be running this class live uh, from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And in this session, we're going to be completing uh, module three. Module three talks about avoiding communication barriers. So we will start off with a little recap of what we've done uh, in module one and two. Um, we will then move into module four, which is to, uh, next Friday. And the following Friday, we will end with our module five. So welcome again, welcome one and all to our communication essentials. So a little recap on what we've done. So we looked at communication and we looked at understanding what is communication, right? So quickly, if, um, if the participants, um, I think, uh, Rachna, we've got 19 who are waiting to join the session. Do they need to be lettered? Yes, so that uh, so we can get everyone to join in while we're just doing a recap. So what is communication? Now, um, we did have a few people telling us that communication was a chat between two people, was conversing with people, one person talking to another, uh, a sender sending a message to a receiver and the receiver responding. A uh, couple of things uh, in there. Uh, yes, we do agree there is a sender and a receiver and someone sending a message, let it be an SMS, let it be via WhatsApp, let it be via email or a letter. Now, the thing is, communication is not effective unless it is in motion. Therefore, we say communication is a dynamic process. It, it is something in motion. It has to go from one person to another and then get returned. How do you know someone's understanding what you say, right? So it is a dynamic process. And through this process, um, through this process, um, we are able to convey a thought or a feeling to someone else, right? Um, there's a thought in my head. I must send an email. I'll send an email. Uh, I have a feeling that I need to connect with some friends. I connect with them. So it's a thought or a feeling. Now, however, when you communicate with somebody else, how it is received at the other end depends upon a set of events, right? We spoke about that. We said a set of events or a stimuli. Now, what did we say about stimulus? Stimulus or the stimuli is a reaction, is something that you react to. For example, a hot cup of tea, which comes towards you and you put your finger or you touch something hot with your elbow, your body immediately reacts, right? And that is stimulus. Now, even a receiver gets exposed to a set of, you know, uh, events or a stimulus, which can cause them to misunderstand you or not understand you, like a noise or distraction, right? So the receiver is exposed to some distraction. Therefore, now, as an individual, you cannot do anything about that, right? You can't do anything to uh, ease 
is their communication. You can't take away the events that is surrounding the receiver, but you can control how you communicate. So how you say and what you say is important. So how is the mode of communication? How are you going to send the message? The line is not clear. The person is unable to understand you. So what are you going to do now? You don't continue talking to them. You follow it up with an email or a WhatsApp message, how you say and what you say, right? You need to talk a lot more clearer. Now, why is communication important? Why is it important to think of how you say and what you say? Because we have to be able to convey and receive messages in a clear way. Now, the world is getting smaller, isn't it? So we need to use it every day in communication while exchanging conversations with another person. Since the world is getting smaller, we are able to connect easily with people across, across our borders. So how do we, um, how do we connect with them? By communicating. And if our communication is not up to par, um, we will be unable to communicate to people, right? With different people. Now, again, a little recap. We looked at the five C's. We said our communication needs to be, uh, needs to follow these five C's, right? It needs to have clarity. It has to be clear. It has to be concise. Um, and concise talks about brevity or being brief. So um, you don't want to keep your emails le so lengthy that people don't read, right? Uh, nobody has the time. You don't have the time to send lengthy emails, nor does the other person have time to read it. So concise. There has to be a reference to context. If you remember, we can send an email in response to somebody's email by referring to it. I refer to your email dated 10th of November in which you asked about my courses context. Uh, it needs to be complete. There has to be impact, right? Uh, otherwise, why would the reader want to read it? What's it in for them, right? What's the impact? Uh, and we need to look at benefits. So impact will be make it memorable. How will they remember it? They will look at data. They will look at the information. They will look at... Um, What's the information that you're sending them? Now, you can make it impactful by giving them what they require. The customer has asked for one, two, three, four, five reasons. Have you answered all those five? That's how we make it impactful. And value is making your message valuable, looking at the benefit. Um, now, we saw these five C's through a, a video, right? We were looking at ingredients, how to make a tasty email, uh, sorry, a tasty meal, <laughs> isn't it? So, because we realized that different audiences have different tastes. So just like that, when you're communicating to different people, you have to change your communication. Every email, every message, every SMS, every WhatsApp message, every call that you make needs to have those five C's. You have to go through it like a checklist. So use all the five, but based on what the customer wants, to make it more impactful, you decide to focus on one more than the others. When there is complexity, you then go in for clarity. When, um, when, the, when people don't have the time, um, time is short, attention span is short, mm. then you go with concise. Um, when there is uh, unfamiliarity, when they are just sending an email, people don't know who you are, then you need to refer to the context. Uh, you need to uh, uh, make sure that your message is complete, impactful. When there is noise, when there is confusion, you need to make it memorable. You want your message to stand out. And we also spoke about value when there is choice, when there's a decision to be made. Right? Hope I've jogged your memory enough. Now, we also need to, so when you're conversing with people, um, you need to um, pause, right, in a conversation because it's not all about spitting out everything that you have learned, right? Vomiting it all out for the other person. You need to give them in bite-sized chunks and pause. 
enough to let them ask you questions. And remember, when people ask you questions, it's not bad. It's good because they want to understand what you're saying. So what you should you do then? You should listen to understand and then respond. And that's the difference we spoke about. We said, let's not listen to respond. Let's not have preconceived ideas. Just listen to them by focusing on that person and then respond to them. Okay. We also spoke about how uh, in a face-to-face -face communication, what would impact your understanding uh, or your communication um, at that point in time, right? There were three factors that we spoke about and we gave them percentages, yes? Uh, we did that in the live chat, correct? Um, so um, I think in the chat also, we had discussed it and a lot of people had responded to, um, you know, um, the, um, in the chat, uh, in the live chat, when you had responded and told me, what are all the factors which can affect when you see a person for the first time, right? What would impact you listening and standing, pausing enough to listen to them? We looked at tone of voice. Um, then we looked at the words. And then we also looked at body language. And these were the main factors that would impact any communication. Out of 100%, we said the first time we see somebody, uh, body language is what will uh, influence us, right? How the person dresses, how they walk, their smile, their eye contact, their gestures, etc. And that's why it's 55%. Then the next impact is the sound of their voice, the tone of their voice. And that was 38%. And then finally, it's the words that they uh, that came out of their mouth, what they spoke. Because the first time you see somebody, this is the impact. But if they don't talk sense, you will not want to listen to them any further. Now, we also said in a, um, you know, in a telephone. Um, so we said, so just now we saw the statistics. We said your words account for less than 10% of your communication, right? If it's only 7%. So what else will impact? What else is important? We just saw that. We said, um, body language, right? And we said, the tone and energy in your voice, correct? Um, so with that, we are going to be moving into uh, body language. So let's take a look at a video that I have here. Just give me a minute. And I'm going to play this video for you. Now, this video, uh, if you pay attention to it, um, is a uh, video about a person who is in a coffee shop and he's standing with the barista. So the person who's serving him the coffee is called the barista. Uh, in the green uh, apron and the cap, uh, and you see the conversation that they have. Uh, look at it and see if they are conversing, if the communication is good, and what happens uh, in this. Can I get started for you today?
So what was that? Uh, you saw that, uh, the video. So what was all of that about, right? It was someone asking for coffee, but what really happened? Was he communicating? Was he talking? Like how I'm talking here? No, right? Um, okay. So what? So what? So what is happening there? So he wasn't talking, but he was trying to communicate, right? And through what? What was he using to communicate? Anyone? Rashmi, can you see some answers in the chat? Okay, so he was using his body language, right? He was using his uh, hand gestures. You saw how many, how much of expressions he had. He was with his eyes, with his face. You could see the expressions that he was using. Now, all he wanted, because in the end, he actually described it to that guy by, you know, using his hand and then shooting himself in the head. Three shots. All he wanted was three shots of coffee. So one coffee with three shots of espresso into his coffee, right? That's all he wanted. But in the end, how much did he take? What did the barrister understand? He thought three um, coffees, three lattes. Then he gave some chocolate chip muffins. Then he gave three uh, CDs. There are all three of them, three CDs. Uh, and then and finally, he gave those three shots uh, and one coffee. Uh, and the price that he paid, he paid $68.20, right? So even though he was trying to communicate, uh, what happened? What was really missing in that communication, right? This was nonverbal communication. And this was body language. Uh, so... Firstly, what do you think was missing? Because he was only using his body, right? Um, what do you guys think is body language? Some reason that I think you can see, uh, you can see uh, my other slides. Um, or what do you think is body language? Right? You just saw that. Yeah. You saw body language because body language is a type of non-verbal communication. And you saw those physical behaviors that he was using. Was he using any words? No. no. Zip. He was not talking. He was using his eyes. He was using his face. He was using his hands, right? In which physical behaviors, as opposed to words, are used to express or convey information. He was trying to express in the previous video, that was Eddie Murphy, the actor. He was trying to express and convey uh, information. But was that happening? Well, it wasn't because such behaviors include facial expressions, body posture, hand gestures, eye movement, touch, Use of space. That's, this is what body language means. Was it effective? Not very, because we don't know that when you are communicating with somebody, you have to use three facets. You have to use body language, which has the, the greatest impact, 55%, but you also have to use your words, tone of voice, and you have to use your words. Words have a 7% impact, but it has to be used Tone of voice has a 38% impact. It has to be used at body language. But of course, if you have people who cannot talk, then they will have to further emphasize their body language so that the other person can understand them, right? Okay, now this point, touch, what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean um, to you? What do you mean? What you understand by touch words? Just give me a minute and I'm going to just stop sharing this for a minute while I ask questions. So what do you understand by touch? What, um, how can touch, um, you know, impact body language? Any idea? 
I'll give you an example, okay, uh, of a um, going in a bus, right? I'm going in a crowded bus. Now, in that crowded bus, um, I want to move from the, um, you know, from the back entrance to the front entrance, right? Now, how will I move? I can't, it's so crowded. I cannot push anybody. Don't I, uh, haven't you seen people who just tap someone on their shoulders, right? Well, that's touch. All I need to do is just tap them. I don't even need to say anything. Automatically, somebody knows that they have to move. So that's the use of body language, touch. How about the use of space? Um, now, um, you know, the concept of space, right? Uh, the space in front of somebody. And uh, when you get angry with someone, what, what do they do? They come close to someone. They, they're in your face and they exert, you know, that stance. So people get scared yeah, when people get angry with you. So that is use of space. This is how you show somebody. You don't need to say anything. It's just your body language. Come forward. There are some people who get so scared that they move backward. They get use of space. Okay. So this is all the use of body language. But as we mentioned, it's not complete. Even though 55% is the impact when you're face to face with somebody, you also need other things like tone of voice and words. So let's take a look at tone. So what is tone of voice? Now I ask you, yeah, what is tone of voice? So this is a dictionary definition. Uh, it's defined as the way a person speaks to someone, right? My tone of voice sounds different from yours, correct? Um, yours will sound different from mine. So each of us sounds different. It's the way a person speaks to someone. Now, tone of voice is also how you use your voice to get your points across, right? Uh, the tone of a person's voice can be modulated. There are classes in which we can get people to modulate their tone of voice in a certain way. So uh, sometimes you, feel, you hear tone uh, through a musical or vocal sound, right? Uh, there are a couple of factors that uh, hamper tone and we will take a look at it. Um, but Something so important about tone is that the 38% we said is important. Uh, if you don't choose your tone right, there is a risk of your point getting lost or misinterpreted. And we will take a look at it in some of the slides that we have um, ahead. Factors that affect the tone. Okay. Now, the first factor that affects is called timber. What does that mean? It's basically just the quality given to a sound, uh, such as, you know, when you are, for example, when you are passing by, now Kavita is sitting and giving her training, and you're passing by the door, you recognize her voice just by hearing her voice, right? You know this is Kavita because you know her. So you are able to recognize her voice. Now, how many times have you been able to recognize your friends just by what they speak? without even seeing them. You have, isn't it? So just like that, when I hear uh, Madhuri Dixit talking, you know, the actress Madhuri Dixit talking, I immediately know it's Madhuri Dixit. How? Oh, it's the timba. It's the quality given to the sound. Yeah. Okay. Now pitch. Uh, pitch is the quality of sound governed by the rate of vibrations producing it. The degree of Highness or lowness. It's the vibrations produced. Now, um, they say that, uh, you know, if a, um, a bat, a bat uh, is able to, uh, because they say a bat is blind, right? So a bat is able to move about by sending out an echo. So it's the vibrations which go out, hit objects, and then come back, right? So that and, and that is pitch. 
And they say that a bat can, bat's vibrations are so high that we can't hear it. Our ears are not uh, built to, to, to get the bat's um, uh, sound, that vibration, the pitch. But a dog can hear it. And sometimes they say when a bat sends out its vibrations, it can shatter. The pitch is so high, it can shatter glass. So there was this um, cartoon, which I, uh, I, I love reading, which is this comics called Tintin. And um, there was uh, this character called uh, uh, Madame Castafiore, Bianca Castafiore, and she used to sing. So she was called Melody's Nightingale. And she used to sing so loudly, so her pitch was so high that it used to shatter the glass and people are, you know, drinking from a glass. It, they, their glasses would break, their uh, specks would break. Uh, it, of course, it was just a fun cartoon, but that's the meaning of pitch, the vibrations in your voice. Um, how about volume? Volume is how loud you are. How soft you are. The degree of loudness. Um, right? Um, um, you know, when you're listening to music, you turn the volume up. Um, you're, you're watching the news. Um, you just want it in the background. You turn the volume down. That's volume, the volume of your voice. Then, and all of this is in tone, right? The speed. What does the speed mean? The rate at which someone speaks. It's the number of words per second. Now, I could be speaking so fast that I speak to you, to you like this in, in terms of timber and the pitch and the volume and the speed is the rate at which someone speaks. I'm speaking fast. Some people do speak fast. When they speak fast, not everybody can understand them, right? And that's speed, which you can work on. You can reduce that. Clarity, now we've seen clarity in the five C's. Clarity is the quality of being coherent and intelligible. How clearly do you speak? How clearly do you um, pass a message on to somebody? Quality of being certain or definite. Now projection, what is this? Voice projection is the strength of speaking or singing. When someone sings, you can hear their voice across. Now there are certain people, orators who when they talk, they don't need a mic. You can hear them. They're able to project their voice across. Yeah, that's projection. The strength of their speaking, uh, of their voice. And remember, each of these can be cultivated. Your tone of voice can be cultivated through practice. And finally, it is energy. So when we talk about communication, we talk about energy. The goal of speaking well is for your voice to touch people's heart, mind, and imagination. Now, how can you do that? How can you bring energy into your voice? Right? How? Do you know? By your smile and by your passion. Now, when you talk to somebody, if you feel passionately about the topic, it will touch their hearts and mind and their imagination, right? There are some people who are natural, um, well, we say they're born storytellers. Right? What does that mean? Because they paint such a picture in front of you that you can actually see that it, it comes to life for you. Uh, so that's the energy in their voice. That's touching your heart, your mind, and imagination. Remember, with a smile and with passion, you can bring energy into your voice. Okay. Now let's look at uh, practicing this. Okay. So we looked at timber. We looked at pitch. We looked at volume. We looked at speed. We looked at clarity, projection, energy. All of these contributes to your tone. You just need to know what they are. And if you understand each one of them, then you can try and control your tone. Um, now, the thing about tone is a multiple people can say the same sentence, but their different tone will convey a different meaning. Now, what do we mean by that? When, you, uh, when you're using your voice, there is something known as intonation. That is, you know, um, when you talk, when you communicate, they say you should not use the same pitch. That's why we are understanding what pitch is, right? You should vary your voice. You should vary your clarity. You should vary your projection and you should have energy in your voice. Now, how can you do that when you're talking about a sentence? That, so that is by using intonation, 
for example, I've got the sentence here in front of you. It says, I told you he murdered the governor. Now, if I emphasize on a different word, let's look at the meaning of each word, okay? I told you he murdered the governor. What do you think that means? Please put it in the chat, guys, if you know that meaning, right? I told you he murdered the governor. What does that mean? That means only I told you, right? No one else. I told you he murdered the garden. Correct? Okay. I told you he murdered the garden. What does that mean? Because I was the one who told you, not um, anybody else. Okay. See, you see the meaning, meaning changes. When I said I, that means I was the only one. And now I told you. Okay. I told you he murdered the gardener. I told you the other day that he murdered the gardener. Why didn't you do anything about it? Meaning changes. I told you he murdered the gardener. What does that mean? It means only he's murdered the gardener, not she, not the other him. Right? Okay. I told you he murdered the gardener. Now, what does that mean? The gardener did not commit suicide. He did not uh, give sleeping tablets to the gardener. Right? The gardener did not die of natural causes. He murdered the gardener. Okay. I told you he murdered the gardener. What does that mean? That means only this gardener. Right? Not any other gardener. Not your gardener. Only this gardener. He murdered. Okay. I told you he murdered the gardener. What does that mean? That means we are talking about the gardener, not the maid, not the servant, not the plumber. Right? Now, how many meanings have I given you? By emphasizing on different words, I'm giving you so many different meanings. So can you see now that if you emphasize Size on the wrong word can give a different meaning. Okay, let's get you to try it out. Yeah. Now let's look at this example. Now, if you guys cannot try it, obviously you cannot try it out aloud, but try it on your own. Now let's look at this example. This says, I had a great time at your party. Now, what are you trying to say in this sentence? You are trying to uh, tell them that you had a great time, right? So what will you emphasize on? Which word? Let's see, what did you try? How many of you said, I had a great time at your party? What does that mean? That only you had a great time, right? Um, Shrivas didn't have a great time. Kavita didn't have a great time. Rashna did not have a great time. Only you had a great time at your party. Right? At the person's party. So, not really correct. Now, let's look at the next one. I had a great time at your party. Oh, so you're, what you're trying to say is that in the past, you had a great time. You did not, you're not having a great time now. You had a great time at your party. You see that? How about this one? I had a great time at your party. Oh, so they are trying to say that at Kavita's party, you had a great time. You did not have a great time in Srinivas's party. Right? That's what it means. I had a great time at your party. So you've got to be really careful about emphasizing on the right word. So what's the right way of saying it? This is the right way. I had a great time at your party. It doesn't matter whether I only had, I had it in the past, or it was your party. The fact is, I'm trying to tell you that I had a great time at your party. Okay, so with energy and smiling, saying, using the word great, the emphasis is on great. That's how you give the right meaning across. Intonation, using your tone. Okay, great. So 
let's take a look at body language and nonverbal communication. Now, this one uh, is a recap. So any questions on what we had seen so far? On this? Yeah, because I can't see any responses of anybody. Um, I don't know if um, Rachna, you can see. Responses. Any questions, guys? No? Okay. So, so the main point here in using the right tone and intonation, that's what it means. It says that if you emphasize on the right words, you will get the desired result. If you emphasize on the wrong word, you will get another result. So be very careful when using the right intonation at the right word. Now, when you're conversing face-to-face -face or on a video with a person, please remember eye contact. Make eye contact with the person. Do not be afraid because eye contact reinforces your message, right? What does it show? It shows people that you're confident. How many times have you seen that when you talk to people, certain people, certain people have been looking away, they've been doing something, they won't look up in your eyes. Now, it could be that they're busy, but it could also mean that they don't really, you know, they, they, they don't have that confidence levels. They lack that confidence, right? So it shows people that you're confident. Okay. Then when you're talking to people, remember your hand gestures. How should they be? Keep them natural. That's what it says. So hands should stay between your eyes and your belly button. It should be here. Open palm gesture. That's natural. That's neutral, right? Do never point fingers at anybody and never speak like that to anyone. So you just got to keep your palms open that way. And remember, smiling is contagious. If you smile, your audience will smile back at you, right? Any questions? Any questions so far? No? Okay. So we're moving into a little bit about listening. So we looked at tone right now. We looked at body language, how important it is to focus on all three, body language, tone, and intonation. Right now, we have completed so far. We've looked at building a foundation where we looked at it in module one. We looked at the art of communication, how important it is to actually communicate with somebody, isn't it? Face to face or on a video. Uh, don't be distracted when you're face to face with somebody sitting on your phones. We saw that through that video. We also looked at how individual communication is. We saw that each person communicates differently with each other um, and what can you do about it? And then we set clear communication goals. I hope you guys remember, we looked at the steps of planning. We looked at setting, uh, planning the background, 
and then actually planning what you should write to the person, right? Or communicate uh, verbally. How does communication happen and the key steps of communication? And then right now, we looked at avoiding communication barriers. We looked at body language and non-verbal communication. And what can stop us from communicating, right? Um, so we are going to be moving into listening for improved understanding. Um, we are looking at listening and asking questions right now. And then we will be moving into emotions. So moving into listening. So while we have a few more minutes, I'm going to move into listening. So I'm going to get you to understand uh, what is listening and what do we mean by effective? Because in all our communication, we talk about making it effective communication. We're not saying uh, you just got, have a conversation with a person and it becomes communication. No. How do you make it effective? Which means the other person needs to listen to you, right? That's why we are moving into effective listening. So what do you understand by effective listening? You guys want to make a note of it and let us know. What do you understand by um, communication, um, effective listening? Yeah. Uh, in the chat, guys, you can you can send me your questions. Okay, since I can't see any responses, I'm just going to move ahead. So having effective listening skills means being able to display an interest in the topic. Now, now do you see why I keep asking you these questions, right? I keep asking you questions and I keep telling you, please put it down in the chat because I'm looking for a response to what I'm saying. I'm ensuring that my communication is effective, isn't it? Because this is what we have seen in effective communication. You can't change how the other person talks. You can't change how the other person listens to you. But what you can change is yourself. So uh, having effective listening. So when I'm at the other end and I'm listening to you guys, I should be able to display an interest in the topic. Now, when you are listening to me, how do you show me that you're interested in the topic? You show me you are interested. How? By? by displaying interest in the topic discussed and understanding the information provided, okay? Because today, the ability to communicate effectively is becoming increasingly important, right? Uh, as I mentioned, and as this picture shows you, two people talking to each other. So you see how their body languages are? They're facing each other. Now, because the world is getting smaller, it is so important that we communicate effectively. And when we say effective communication, you also have to have effective listening, right? When you talk to somebody and they respond back, you need to hear what they're saying. And that's why we're looking at listening skills. Now, look at this. Uh, so this is two people talking, right? Have any of you practiced? Just uh, this method of having a conversation, this telephone, when you were children. Well, I remember when I was a kid, we used to make it out of tin cans, make a hole in the tin can, put a thread through it and actually talk. I don't know if we could hear each other, but um, we used to feel that we were actually on a telephone, long distance call and having a conversation. Right? So what is listening? And what is active listening? Is there a difference? Put it down in the chat if you think there's a difference.
So I'll give you an example for listening or hearing. Now, Kavita is doing the training. Somebody passing by, whether they like it or not, they can hear Kavita's voice, right? Because her voice is loud, uh, they are passing by, their ears are open. Unless they are listening to music, they can hear what Kavita is saying. That is listening. You don't need to listen to it. You're not interested in listening to it. As you pass by, you get these sounds coming into your head. Right? Now, while I'm sitting and doing the training, I can hear traffic outside. I can hear people talking outside. I, I don't want to listen to them, but I can hear it. And that is just listening. But we are telling you, in order to make your communication effective, you need to do active listening. And what is active listening? So if listening is just listening to sounds passing by, what is active listening? Now, active listening is a communication process. And to be successful is an active process. Right? In other words, you must be an active participant in this communication process. Now, look at these two brothers who are talking on that, uh, you know, that little uh, box. They're talking through those tin cans. Look at their body language. Even though they're supposed to be on a telephone, they are still looking at each other, right? They're active participants. So that's why they will be able to hear each other. One is saying something, the other one is looking at the other person, like in a face-to-face -face conversation or a video call. You look at the other person. Have you noticed uh, when you're on a video call that if you don't aren't, and even face-to-face, -face, when you look at a person, you are able to understand them much more clearly than when you don't look at the person because you are able to actually lip read. You're able to read their lips and hear them. So you're watching their body language as well as hearing them. And therefore you're able to understand them better rather than on a telephone where, as we said, body language does not disappear because it impacts your tone of voice. But unless you are a lot clearer, people find it difficult to hear you if you're on, your tele on the telephone, right? Therefore, for active listening, for listening to be active, you need to be an active participant. In active listening, the meaning and evaluation of a message must take place before a listener can respond to a speaker, right? So you can't, uh, you can't be an active listener uh, you know, if you don't understand what the other person is saying, you have not looked at the meaning, you have not evaluated why they're saying it, what they're saying it, where are they coming from? So how would you understand it? Now, uh, let's talk, uh, because, we, because the world is getting smaller, we are now conversing with people across the world. Uh, I could be sitting here in Hyderabad talking to somebody in the Antarctica, right? Uh, I could be sitting here and talking to somebody in Canada. Different time zone, different weather, uh, distances are great, but I can still talk with them. Correct? Now, if I, even though I don't know the language, say I don't understand French, for example, uh, if I am face to face with them and they start using body language, I will be able to understand what they say. Right? And that's what happens. Active listening is all about looking at the meaning and evaluation of the message before they can, before the, before you can respond to the speaker. Okay. So now this is a something called a communication cycle. And um, once I explain this, we will stop here um, because then we will meet again uh, next week for an hour. Uh, for uh, the next part of the communication cycle uh, for effective communication. So the communication cycle. Now, uh, this talks about somebody speaking. Okay, the speaker. Speaker speaks. The other person needs to hear them. The communication gets heard. Then the communication needs to get understood. Okay. Then it should be agreed to, um, right? Okay, this is this this is what I have to do. This is what I need to understand. Um, okay, uh, 
uh, yeah, 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 I can understand this now. I'm agreeing to it, right? And only when I agree to it, can I then act upon it, okay? I need to act upon this information because I've got this information. Once I act upon it, it gets implemented. Now, if there is a gap somewhere in this communication cycle, like, like for example, I speak, someone, uh, I speak, someone hears me, but uh, I haven't taken the effort to follow the five C's. I haven't spoken clearly using my body language, my energy, my tone. I haven't used that. So they have heard something. And with that something, they think they understand what I have said. Then they agree to what they think they have understood. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think I understood this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to agree to it. And then they go with that half knowledge and then they act on it. Okay? And then they say it gets implemented. Now, if I am passing some instructions to somebody, to my team, but it's not heard properly and therefore not understood, not really fully agreed to, acted upon that half knowledge and then implemented, will things go well? No, there will be gaps, isn't it? That's why there are gaps in instructions not being carried out well because the communication has not gone well. So as a leader or as a person who's communicating, I need to ensure at the stage of spoken, once the person I speak, the person hears me, I need to double check and understood. Okay, now you tell me what have you understood? This is what I'm also trying to do with you guys. I'm trying to ask you questions to make sure that you've understood what I'm saying, right? Okay, so write down the answers to these questions. Practice with your tone. Practice the statement by, inton uh, by using the right intonation on each of the words. Because I need to make sure that you have understood. So any good communicator after speaking needs to ask questions to ensure the other person has understood. Okay, repeat back after me to show me what you've understood. Once they repeat back, if there is a gap, you can correct it then and then. No, 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 I didn't say this. I didn't say A, B, C, D, E. I just said A, B, C, D. I didn't say E, I said F. Right? Understood. And then we can then agree on it. So I said A, B, C, D, E. Is that agreeable to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Right? Once it's agreed to, and we are certain that they have understood what we've said, we then let them go to act upon that information. And once it gets implemented, we say, Okay, now I know. I don't need to double check. I know they will do it right. I just maybe need to do a cursory check because I know they have gone through that communication cycle perfectly. Any questions? What questions do you have for me at this stage? Put your questions down. And Rachna, you can share the questions with me. Just share the questions with me, uh, Rachna, if they have any questions.
Okay. What does intonation mean? Very nice. Nice one. So intonation basically means emphasizing on the right word. How do you make your conversation interesting? Not by using the same tone in the same, in the same sentence. For example, I am using a sentence. I am talking about uh, the communication cycle. And I say a person speaks, they are heard, they are understood, they are agreed to, they are acted on, they are implemented. Now, how do you ensure that the person has completed? If, if I say use the right intonation, that means you need to emphasize on different words, such as the person speaks, emphasis, intonation on speaks. The person then, the, the listener then hears. And have they heard it right? If they've heard it right, they would have understood. If they have not understood, we need to check on them. Right? That's the meaning of intonation, emphasizing on different words. Now, paying attention. Okay, so is, is that okay? Do you understand how intonation means emphasizing on different words to give a different meaning? You cannot use the same tone with a full sentence. You have to emphasize on different words. Okay, what does paying attention mean? Paying attention to the person who's talking is part of active listening. It's part of active listening. Only if you pay attention to the other person, eye contact, listen to what they say, that is active listening. If you are doing your own work and not paying attention to them, how will you hear what they're saying, right? That is why in today's time, because we've got the internet, a lot of people do multitasking. They do self-paced learning and they're doing their work. How will they pay? How will they be able to give 100% attention to what the person is saying? Right? They won't be able to. Anyway, stay tuned, guys, for our next session because we are coming to an end of the session. So thank you one and all for the session. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you back again next Friday for a one hour session. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.